Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna with Hasna Snat me and today as you can see that I am speaking to you and the credits go completely to this guy right over here and that is what we're going to be doing the ospi of the day do you guys want to know how you talk let's learn the larynx so first let me fix this broken larynx and then we'll talk about what it actually contains its various structures its nerves and most importantly its cartilages so larynx is constructed by different types of cartilages that are joined to each other via membranes and these membranes are all together joining with the muscles to form what we call the inlet of the larynx somehow i have to teach you today by the end of the video how all of these things are structured and where they're located so the first cartilage that we talk about when we talk about the larynx is i'm sure you all remember it is the leader of the group it is the thyroid cartilage this is the thyroid cartilage which is the main group leader of uh, the cartilages of the larynx this cartilage goes like i am going to take the lead and you guys need to follow me and this is the most obvious cartilage of the larynx so you can see this area right here where two parts are meeting this is known as the laryngeal prominence and this above this is the thyroid notch itself is the thyroid cartilage this these are the this is basically the lamina of the thyroid cartilage going above is the superior horn and below is the inferior horn what is the next cartilage that we talk about when we talk about the larynx is the cricoid cartilage you all remember it's basically a two timer disloyal friend i don't remember what i called it in my larynx video so go check that out first and tell me what i called the cricoid cartilage right cartilage just below the thyroid cartilage this right here is the cricoid cartilage now anteriorly the cricoid cartilage has the arch and posteriorly you'll notice that the cricoid cartilage anteriorly it's tiny and as it goes posteriorly it becomes bigger so posteriorly this is the lamina of the cricoid cartilage and as you all can see the thyroid cartilage doesn't go posteriorly it has a posterior border but the cricoid cartilage completely encloses like a ring the entire inlet of the larynx this over here is the hyoid bone what do you think this membrane will be obviously the thyro hyoid membrane it has a median part and a lateral part together it forms that membrane what lies below the thyroid cartilage connecting it to the cricoid cartilage this right here this tiny portion you can see is the crico thyroid membrane these are the important structures you can see over here now let's go back and look at the other cartilages this is the posterior view of the larynx and what we can see here just above cricoid cartilage you can see right here this is the paired cartilage the first paired cartilage is known as the arytenoid cartilage i hope you can see it is pyramidal in shape arytenoid cartilage was the party member of the group because this guy just wants to live its life because it's pyramidal shape and it's shaped like a party hat so guys go check that video out where i told you why they're called what they are all right and then on this side you can see sorry technical difficulties going above this is the corniculate cartilage and finally the cuneiform i hope you can see this is the corniculate and the cuneiform cartilage so if there is a pin on these tiny guys over here you all know what to say if it's blue it's going to be a cartilage for sure now most important cartilage you can see just behind the thyroid cartilage we've removed the anterior part this is the epiglottic cartilage this guy is the security guard of the group we need this guy because it goes like you can enter my group but you are to not intelligent enough to be in my group no offense to anybody that's dumb but like yeah let's just move on from this part because it's getting really awkward now we know the overall cartilages and the membranes of the larynx why not we move on to the muscles of the larynx all right so all of these uh, red colored or orange colored bellies you can see all are, these are the important muscles of the larynx that are going to help us open close uh, tense the vocal cords abduct and adduct i hope you remember all those muscles i know they were difficult so you guys better learn that only then you can understand it better over here so what we can see here is the first muscle it's very obvious you're just going to see locate it and just name it so this is thyro hyoid muscle this guy right here what do we see here it is going from the cricoid to the thyroid this is anteriorly the crico thyroid muscle i mean what else can it be this is where the issue gets a little bit uh, problematic where you see these many muscles but guess what we're going to make this super easy for you because you clicked on the right video this is the crico thyroid uh just posterior to the cricothyroid there's something that is running from the cricoid going posteriorly to the arytenoid so obviously this is the lateral cricoarytenoid and going posteriorly between the cricoid cartilage that is going above to the arytenoid cartilage is going to be the posterior cricoarytenoid and on that note you can see these muscles that are like a criss cross for, for, formation this is a cross and this is the criss i hope that makes sense so these are the oblique arytenoids and this is the transverse arytenoid oblique arytenoid you can see that it as it goes above it becomes what we call the muscle known as the ary epiglottic why do you think we call it that well 100% it has something to do with it extending from arytenoid 
to the epiglottis erytenoid to the epiglottis erytenoid to the epiglottis what on earth does that mean basically you can see the erytenoid cartilage going all the way you can see right here to the epiglottis right here so this muscle that goes from posterior towards anteriorly going ahead to go to the epiglottis so obviously this muscle is going to be known as the airy epiglottic muscle right here all right and remember that the oblique erytenoids are continuing as this so that's a hint or a shortcut for you to learn this muscle now let's go a little bit anteriorly and see what muscle we have here we can see that there's there are like about 20 muscles originating here i have no idea what they are but let's just try to figure this out basically remember there are two muscles that are originating from thyroid cartilage you can see anteriorly there is a thyroid cartilage this is originating this both the mu these muscles, uh, the least we know is that they have to have a name thyro in it. So remember this, the one going like that posteriorly, this is the thyro erytenoid muscle and the one going above towards the epiglottis is going to be known as the thyro epiglottic muscle. So if the pin is over here, this is thyro epiglottic muscle, it's going above towards the epiglottis and this going posteriorly, this is from the thyroid to erytenoid, so thyro erytenoid muscle. What are the actions of these muscles is something that I'm not going to tell you right now is something you have to watch in my other videos. Promise me you're going to subscribe to my channel. Do it right now. I'm waiting. Wait, why should I wait for you? You can totally pause the video. What is this whole situation going on here? Let's talk about this situation. This again, this is the epiglottis, right? So what is extending from the epiglottis like a curtain is going towards the erytenoid cartilage. What do you think it should be? It should be something to do with eri and an epiglottic. So it is a airy epiglottic fold and why do we call it fold because this is not a ligament, this is not a muscle, this is not a bone, this is not a cartilage. So obviously if it's a mucous membrane situation, so it has to be a fold. I hope that makes sense. So airy epiglottic fold. So right next to the airy epiglottic fold is where, you know those people that love drugs, I'm not one of them, I hope you're not one of them, but those people that smuggle drugs and like, you know, travel from country to country. I swear to God, I know no one like that. I don't know who does that, but no offense to them. But this is that fossa or the pyriform fossa or smuggler's fossa where they throw the drugs in and when they're like in their place of business, they uh, throw it up. I know it sounds awful, but yeah, they throw it up and take out the drugs from here. And these drugs have been successfully smuggled. Well done, not well done actually. Really hope YouTube doesn't put my video down for that. So this is the airy epiglottic fold go a little bit anteriorly I want to show you this fold that you can see from the epiglottis going anteriorly this fold is known as the hyo epiglottic fold all right so if the pin is over here it's a hyo epiglottic fold right lateral to this hyo epiglottic fold on either side you'll see this area over here this is known as vellecula so this is a basic structure let me just tell you the neurovascular bundle I'm so sorry for undressing this guy. Let's put its clothes back. This nerve that you see coming over here that is going to pierce the thyrohyoid membrane, it is known as the internal laryngeal nerve. So because there's just one nerve that is going to pierce Mr. Uh, membrane, the thyrohyoid membrane, and that's going to be the internal laryngeal nerve. And the uh, artery coming here, this entire artery is actually going towards the thyroid. And while it's going towards the thyroid, it's like, honey, you seem lonely so let me just give you one of my branches and what branches will it give it gives the superior laryngeal artery so this is internal laryngeal nerve superior laryngeal artery and superior thyroid artery so when i remove this oh my god hope it's not i hope <laughs> i tried to think of a joke yeah that didn't work <laughs> so this so what we can see here is um this is the internal laryngeal nerve along with it lies the superior laryngeal artery as we go inferiorly this Right here is a recurrent laryngeal nerve and with it lies the inferior laryngeal artery. I mean, obviously there's a superior, so there has to be an inferior, right? And if every, any time the pin comes over here, it's the trachea. Now let's talk about the interior of the larynx. In the interior of the larynx, once again, epiglottis. You can see that fold that I talked about, the hyoepiglottic fold. And you can also see uh, the thyroid cartilage. Okay, this is basically the inlet of the larynx. So you can see these two folds. The fold above is known as the vestibular fold, whereas the lower one is known as the vocal fold. All right, Bene between the two, it's, this is part is known as the sinus of the larynx. So the part above the folds is known as supraglottic part or the vestibule of the larynx, whereas the part below these folds, this is known as the infraglottic part of the larynx and this itself is known as the glottic part. But they probably can't put a pin on that, so they won't ask that. They'll just ask you about the vestibular, vocal fold and sinus of the larynx. And if they put a pin over here, tricky question, would you call it the infraglottic part? 
and if you don't then you're topping this paper it is the trachea if you see from outside to inside this is actually the trachea it's just this part that is the larynx that's going to help us talk that's going to help us breathe okay and what is this this is the epiglottic fold once again see the upper part of this entire supraglottic part should, should will be supplied by the supra superior laryngeal artery and the inferior part will be supplied by inferior laryngeal artery therefore this is how they're arranged i really hope that larynx ospi is on your fingertips because at least it's on mine don't forget to subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments what ospi do you think i should do next thank you so much for watching